Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning you good. And welcome to part three of our CGI stunt double tutorial. I'm still in the YouTube space, I film part two and part three back to back. That's why I'm wearing the same shirt like Jason Blaha in his videos, but is what it is. Now guys, if you haven't seen part one, head down the description or click on that at the end screen. Because you kind of need to see part one because we're building the model in that. I mean, it's stupid if you just jump into part two or part three. It's, and you're not stupid, are you? My God. Hell, I might even put a card above my head. Here we go. In this episode, we're going to be compositing our model into our scene in After Effects. So, let's just jump straight into it. Hey guys, well here we are in After Effects, and I'm going to show you both ways that you can composite our CGI stunt double into your shot. The best part is that by matching the camera angle and matching the lighting, you've already done all the hard work. So, good on you. Give yourself a reach around. Uh, no, no, that, that, that's not right. A, a pat on the back. Yes, that's the right one. Alrighty, so like I said in the last episode, you can either import your model directly into After Effects or render out your model animation and then import that image sequence in. So let's do both, because it's easier than you think. Firstly, importing your model straight out of Cinema 4D. It's as simple as this. Let's double click the project window, find our model, here it is. Let's select it and then hit open. From there, as you can see, I've got my comp set up with my footage ready for that model. So let's drag and drop that model right in, there we go, and right away it looks <coughs> like crap. Oh no. Well, that's because Cineware, the plugin that allows After Effects to use these models, by default has our model's render settings set to software. So basically, After Effects doesn't crash and burn. It makes them look like crap, so it can actually play the animation and it makes it easier to preview. So, we just have to tell Cineware to show it in its full glory. To do that, we'll just head to Render Settings and change it from Software to Standard Final. Now, when I do this, even with a relatively fast computer, it's gonna slow down a lot. In fact, how about some lovely music to tide us over? Okay then, so you can see that getting a RAM preview is out of the question. Even on quarter strength, this thing is still just chugging along. Yet another reason why we matched our lighting and camera before we came into After Effects. So we actually know our model works in this shot. So what's next? Well, if you want to move the model over a little bit and add effects to it, uh, given the fact that it takes this long to render a frame without effects, how about we pre-compose it and make sure all of those attributes have been moved into the new comp. From there, you can see we can now hit P and move our model around. It now has no effect on the render speed. Hooray! Next, well, time to blend him in a little. To do that, I'm gonna go old school and use some tools that you might have not used to color correct for some time. Let's head up to effect, color correction, and add a hue and saturation. Then we'll head back up to the same area and grab a brightness and contrast. And because my boy has a really green shirt, I'm going to go up one more time to the same area and grab a change color. Now gang, broken record time here, but the settings I use in these plugins are based on my shot. Yours will be different. I shot this with a relatively flat color profile and that informs me a lot of the choices that I'm about to make. So firstly, I'm going to move the hue slightly to the pink just to match my skin tone, just a little. Next, I'm going to bump the saturation level down, say, negative 30. There we go. And say, increase the lightness to remove some of the harshness of the shadows. As you can see, it's blending better already. The green on the shirt is still a little bit too saturated, but I'll deal with that in a sec. From there, I'm going to subtly up the brightness a little, say, 6. Just so the black of my beanie and the black of his jacket are a little bit closer. I'm then going to dial up the contrast a little just to bring some more detail back to my darker areas. Now, could I do all of this in something like Calorista 2, 3, or 4? 
totally. But I figured it's better showing you without third party stuff and I very rarely use curves or levels to adjust things. I just, it's weird, but I find them just confusing to use. I like the numbers. The last thing I'm gonna do color wise is lower the saturation of the shirt. So with our change color, I'm gonna grab the eyedropper and select a nice green part of the shirt. There. I think I'll bust the tolerance down to 10% mainly because I know that's my sweet spot since I've already done this. I'm writing the tutorial and recording it right now. And from there, I'm gonna bust that green down, say about minus 12, which should help in blending our CGI character into this shot a little better. But once again, guys, you might think I haven't gone far enough or I've gone too far. That's why I always say, have a play with all of these plugins and see what works for you. Now that we have our model blended, feel free to add an adjustment layer and throw on a color grade to see how our final shot will look. For this, I'm just gonna head up to effect really quickly and add Magic Bullet Film. With a little adjustment, not bad, eh? But there is two things that I did in my shot that I haven't shown here yet. In the original skit, you can see Greg here is casting a light shadow on Grant's arm. Speaking of me in the third person. And guess what? That was super easy to do. All I did was duplicate the model pre-comp. I then deleted all the effects off the bottom one. I then went up to effect, perspective, and added a drop shadow. From there, I checked shadow only, so we only get the shadow. I then adjusted the opacity of that shadow, the distance, and the position, like so. When I was happy with that, I jumped up, I grabbed the pen tool, and I drew a rough mask around the parts of myself that I wanted to have the shadow cast on. And of course, I then hit F, and feathered it out around 50 pixels. Simple as that, gang. Quick and easy shadow. I can also do a shadow in Cinema 4D, but I figured this was easier, and it was. The other thing, and this is small but huge at the same time for blending, I used Pixel Motion Blur to add, well, some motion blur to my model's hand as he waves. Now, obviously, I can't show you in real time with the Cinema 4D file, so let's quickly grab the rendered image sequence that I already rendered out of Cinema 4D and add that to our comp. So I'm just gonna import my image sequence I rendered out of Cinema, here it is. I'm gonna drop that into the comp, just as I would any other element, position it into place, and then I'll just copy and paste the coloring effects that I added to our model. I'll then turn off the model in the shadow layer. Boop. From there, it's time to add a little motion blur. For this, we're just gonna head over to presets and type in pixel. Then we'll grab pixel motion blur and drop that onto our rendered image sequence. And of course, you're just gonna notice that all your coloring effects that you just put on have disappeared like But that's because the pixel motion blur, just like T-Rex in Orgasmo, wants to be on top. You want me on top? No, no, but uh, I'll be on top. You're gonna make me come, or I'm gonna kick your butt. So just drag and drop it to the top of your effects and bam, all fixed. And I hope you enjoyed that clip and it sticks with you for quite some time. Now, one thing I will caution though, if you plan on adding this motion blur to your Cinema 4D file, render your model out with an alpha channel in After Effects first because this will make it take so much longer to render. You have no idea. So if you don't know how to do that, all you have to do is open up that pre-comp, add it to the render queue, or just hit Control M, and set it to RGB plus alpha in the lossless settings. And you'll need it to either be an AVI, or you'll need to hit on QuickTime, and make sure it's the animation compression. Now, let's jump back to the uh, motion blur. Now, all I do with pixel motion blur to make it better is I'll bump the shutter speed down to either 60, or 50. I'll then bump the shutter samples up to say 15 and then I'll up the vector detail to around 20. This will make it render a little bit slower but it will give you a much more natural motion blur. Now you can add the motion blur in cinema but honestly it's hard to justify the extra render time. But that's it gang, blending your character into your scene is not that hard since you already did the heavy lifting in cinema, matching the camera angle and the lighting. It's just a few basic color correction tips, a drop shadow if you need one, and adding some motion blur. I'd love to tackle some more advanced uses of our stunt doubles, like actually doing a blend between actor and stunt double in the same shot, like some big jumps or flying. So let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that, or maybe another suggestion for what we could do with these models now that we've built them. The sky really is the limit, gang. 
so let me know. And a big thanks to everyone who commented on my facial animation question in the last episode. We'll have to get that happening in a future episode. But for now, this is our three-part series on CGI stunt doubles. Done. So out of all three parts and all of those steps, you get something like this. You know, Greg. Hi. CGI stunt double. CGI stunt double? Yeah, dude. Check this out. Oh. See? So guys, that is the conclusion of our three-part series on creating your own CGI stunt double. In the end, it might be a little less steps, but I think you'll agree that it is worth it, and it's really not as hard as it initially seems to be. When you think about it, you can jump into Mixer and apply so many different bits of motion capture data to your model. Realistically, the sky's the limit to what you want to do with this character. And if you don't want to apply the motion capture data, you can just hand animate the thing as well. I mean, it's just that versatile. So guys, that is the end of our three-part series on CGI stunt doubles. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button or check out my Patreon. The maximum buy-in is still only a dollar and we appreciate any support you can give. Other two parts are right there, right there, there, and my social media crap is above my head. But until next time rolls around, and who knows what we're doing, keep learning!